am David Levin, and this is another awesome episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes TV stories you wouldn't have known from the people who were there. A few years back, pop culture world lost two beloved icons from the golden age of television. Before there was Batman vs. Superman, before there was Supergirl, before there was Smallville, the Justice League, and Lois and Clark, and Superboy, and Superman the movie, and even Batman, there was The Adventures of Superman, starring George Reeves, which aired from 1952 through 1958, and beginning around its third season, the first TV series ever to be produced in color. Jack Larson was, for an entire generation, the Jimmy Olsen, the intrepid cub reporter, photographer, Superman's pal, the guy who was always getting in trouble relying on the Man of Steel to get him out of it, and Noel Neal was Superman's scrappy wannabe girlfriend, the girl reporter, Lois Lane. Neil was 95 when she passed away in 2016. Jack Larson passed away in 2015. In addition to playing Jimmy Olsen, Larson was a prolific playwright and well-loved in the theater world. Their final screen appearances, appropriately enough, were in 2006's Superman Returns. A while back, I had the pleasure of interviewing both Larson and Noel Neal about their experiences on the 1950s Adventures of Superman series, which starred George Reeves. In part one, we talk about the early episodes and working on the legendary sound stages that were part of Hollywood history, working at Hal Roach Studios. Jack Larson tells us of the first day of shooting with George Reeves, shooting in color, working with Orson Welles' Citizen Kane crew. Lots of great movie trivia in this episode. Here's Jack Larson and Noel Neal. We are ready to roll. Okay. Goodness, you got three pages to... You know what? Yeah, I'm kidding. I don't know what I'm happened teasing. to this. I could do this in my sleep. Yeah, oh, no. You can do it in your sleep. <laughs> please don't, please don't. I, will not. I, came, I came out just to do this, actually. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Superman. and Let's talk about what was the atmosphere like on the Superman set. Oh. <laughs> are, we, are we rolling? We are rolling. We're rolling. Really? really? I'm used to action. <laughs> action. <laughs> action. Not action comics, but action. All right, let's go. What was it like on the Superman set? Well, of course, I was a late joiner, but um, so you know more about it than I do, but everybody was so nice. Well, we were very happy to have you. Well, thank you. And see you. <laughs> it was wonderful on the, on the yeah, set. We really. liked each other. Mm -hmm. The the gang, uh, uh, the whole thing, George Reeves, Bob Shane, John Hamilton, yeah. who was my chief, my Perry White, yeah. Noel. We liked each other, and so we enjoyed working together. Mm -hmm. And I think we all had the feeling, I had the feeling very <laughs> strongly, that we were pioneers. And we were working at that time on uh, Washington Boulevard at uh, Archeo Pathé, which had been Selznick's studio, were gone with the wind. Mm -hmm had been shot, and at that uh, uh, time in 51, a chaplain was shooting the interiors of Limelight with Buster Keaton, and, uh, uh, and the first uh, time we went on location, uh, George Reeves, uh, mm -hmm. we went onto the back lot of the old Selznick lot, mm -hmm. and the sets of Gone with the Wind were still standing. Oh, really? Uh, oh, which he was in? George. Oh, played one of the Tarleton, Tarleton twins, twins. <laughs> and, and we were marching across the, the hills of this back lot, and I saw Tara. It was, uh, things mm -hmm. were looking pretty shabby, but they were still standing there, and the old railway station, and I thought, gee, there was George in his <laughs> Superman cape, and I thought, what can he be thinking from Gone with the Wind to Superman? But we never spoke about it, and, uh, and he mm -hmm. was a sport. George yeah, and sure. and uh, but everybody uh, enjoyed each other and mm -hmm. we developed um, a rapport in working together. People told me that why they really liked the show because we seemed like a family and really liked each other, which we did. Yeah, right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And down the street, when I said we were. Uh, had a sense of being pioneers in television because mm -hmm. we were one of the, the first shows ever shot with one camera. We were shooting the same way as, same year as Lucy, but she was a three camera show with an audience. We were one what? camera Fire trying herself. to work as fast as possible <laughs> right. and uh, shooting uh, this. Uh, if you goof, uh, just keep talking. The, the, yeah, this film, just, don't say cut, just go on. Go, go, go. I'll say cut, said go. the director, go. and yeah. uh, we'll cover you. But um, the first 
day that George Reeves and I worked together, mm -hmm. uh, he was going to save Jimmy from being sealed in a safe by the villains and dropped out of a window oh, really? of the street <laughs> scene. And RKO Pathé didn't have street scenes. Hal Roach did. And Hal Roaches were low and hardy. Uh, everybody that I thought were great worked at Roach, and they were down the street. Mm -hmm. So we were going to do this shot of Jimmy <laughs> being <laughs> saved by <laughs> Superman on this Hal Roach lot. And I thought, as they sealed me into this <laughs> safe, <laughs> and George, your uh, lies. Uh, yeah, uh, George, a uh, little bit of stunt work there, but anyway, catches the safe, opens it up, and saves Jimmy, yeah. uh, me, uh, and the thing. And I thought, well, we're pioneers. This is where Laurel and Hardy did two reels, where uh, Carol Lombard began, where. Uh, uh, the, all the great, uh, you know, bathing beauties yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. And so, let's go for it. It's wonderful to be a pioneer in a field. And you didn't get a pie in your face. Oh, oh. <laughs> so let's talk about the fact that it was a filmed show because they did not only just a one-camera <coughs> shot like a movie, but also it was mm -hmm. the first show to be shot in color. Could you talk about that? Eventually, right? Yeah. Well, they did uh, 26 and 26 black and whites, and then they decided the color. But they were smart in New York, and they said, well, let's see, not too many people have colored sets yet. So they shot it in color and ran it in black and white. That's why so many people said, gee, I didn't know you did it in color. And when color came in, of course, they were all set with the, the last 50-some uh, in color, but it was fun, yeah. With the negatives, right. and it was uh, and it was more expensive because mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, color. It, it takes a longer time to light. Mm -hmm. it takes more lighting right. and mm -hmm. more. And time is a problem. That was a big problem with the show. We had f absolutely first rate crews from really beginning to end. Yeah, you know, we had uh, actually on the first uh, 26, we had Orson Welles crew, essentially. Jimmy Speak, I mean, we're talking here about uh, oh, Citizen right. Kane and yeah, Magnificent right. Ambrose. Yeah. We had these great crews who'd worked at RKO. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we had uh, Joe Byrock. Oh, and Byrock won an Oscar for one of them while we were working, too. Well, and Joe shot Orson Welles' right. last film. Oh, really? Yes, well, he did. Well and. Uh, and uh, Hal Stein, who won an Oscar for, uh, what is it? Uh, it was a special effects film. Uh, the uh, I can't remember what it was called, but the oh. ship is sinking and turns upside down with Shelley Winters in it, naturally. Oh. <laughs> 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 so, well, the Poseidon Adventure. And uh, <laughs> Shelley sort of lost weight. It wouldn't have oh. sunk <laughs> in the way it did. But anyway. But when we got the chaplain's lot. Yes. This one. Yeah. That's all we have time for for now. Be with us next time when you'll find out what it was like working at Charlie Chaplin Studios and watching that great artist at work. Larson scavenges lots of souvenirs. I also asked them about the memorabilia they may have kept from the Superman series. And whatever happened to Jimmy Olsen's bow tie, it's going to be great. Till then, what memorabilia do you have from old TV shows or movies? Let me know in the comments, and maybe we'll feature you in a future episode of Pop Goes the Culture. See you then. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, don't miss a single episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the Boomer Tube, or Ask Them Yourself. Subscribe and top the bell icon so you never miss an episode.